Okay, constant interruptions. Hey, constant interruptions. You've always got to be in the middle of it. Hi everyone, welcome back to episode two of the Woolen Witch podcast. My name is Steph and I run Woolen Witch, which is an independent one woman business uh, where I make and sell hand dyed yarn, fiber, spinning kits, stitch markers. I make things that I would want to use and I try to sell them because I hope other people also want to use them. Uh, today uh, I've actually got a finished object, um, a work in progress that was in the last episode that I've gotten a lot further on with and I've also treated myself this month to quite a few, yeah probably a bit naughty but quite a few new uh, skeins of yarn as well which I'm quite looking forward to getting on with. I think I'm gonna start with my finished object today and uh, this is, I'm pretty chuffed with these ones. So these are my first finished object. These are the first ever pair of socks I have ever knitted and I am so, so pleased with them myself. Like, oh, I'm so proud of myself. Um, I feel like a proper knitter now that I've finished a pair of socks. Um, the first one isn't perfect. Uh, it looks, it looks good. I, I, it looks good, but it doesn't fit is the problem. So, um, uh, with this first sock I actually knitted far too tightly so there's not a lot of stretch in it. Um, I loosened up by the toe where I realised I was going wrong but it's very tight across my foot and then I've also started the toe way too early but I learnt my lesson and in the second sock I done it properly. I also ran out of the contrast yarn so I've got a nice stripy toe going on. I'm not opposed to it, I quite like it. So I managed to finish this one. I'm really chuffed with this one. This one fits me perfectly. Uh, but annoyingly, because the first one doesn't fit me, it kind of seems pointless me keeping these pair of socks. So I think I'm going to gift these to my sister because she's actually got a lot smaller feet than me by like two sizes so <laughs> they don't fit me just so I'm hopefully they fit her properly. So that is my finished project this month. Woohoo! Um, yeah I'm really really proud of myself. I'm gonna knit myself some socks and actually make sure that they fit me this time. Um, so the yarn in these ones are actually from what well, it was called Harbour Crochet the dyer was called Harbour Crochet, used to be. Uh, it is now Indie Yarn Club, I believe. I think she's changed and rebranded herself. These were part of her crochet sock kit. Um, and I think the colourway was Inky Fingers. So that's my finished project. Uh, my work in progress. This one has basically taken up all of my time. Uh, I'm, I'm not the quickest of knitters, I have to say. Uh, I'm okay um, but there's no way I can do and finish a project in a day or a week or anything. Um, I like to take my time, I mess up quite a lot so the slower I do it the less mistakes I make. And you know knitting has to be fun, I don't want to stress out about it. And this project is, I want to say to roll to go? I had trouble with saying this last time, to roll go, to to roll to go, shawl. It's a mouthful, I struggle. It's by um, Caitlin Hunter, uh, who does Boyland Knitworks. So, oh, gotta go backwards. So this is how far I've gotten. So it's just lots of stripes at the moment, um, which I started really enjoying, but there's so many stripes, I've gone kind of bored with it, but it's okay, because I'm on my last stripe 
now and it goes into lace work from here which I really enjoy doing. So in my last podcast I was also working on this but I was quite far down so where my stitch marker is here um, which is not far into it. I have to really have to stretch my arms up to get this in focus. Yeah so I've tried to keep track of my progress in between podcasts because otherwise I will forget where I've been and what I've been talking about. Uh, so that's what this stitch marker is. Um, this stitch marker is actually one of mine that I sell. I don't know if I'm going to get this to focus properly. There we go. So it's my one of my little rose ones. Um, and the yarn I've been using this uh, in this project is actually one that I dye myself. One. Three different, three different ones. Um, so the purple, darker purple stripes in this is Ruby Falls. Um, the pale creams with the pinks and the grey tones going through them is Be My Valentine. And this first part of this lace work here is Karen M. That's actually a new colourway that I came out with last month. Um, inspired by Throne of Glass by Sarah J Maas. I love my young adult fiction books. I can't get away from them. I just adore them. Um, so it's actually been really fun knitting up my own yarn and actually seeing for myself what they knit up like. Because there's one thing dyeing them all the time but I don't sometimes I don't get to actually use my own yarn. Um, so I kind of bagged myself a few skeins off of the shop and started doing it myself. Um, I am so... it's taking me forever. This project is literally taking me forever. And because it's fingering, it's taking me even longer because I'm used to sort of chunky and super chunky knits. Um, so it's getting used to doing like a lightweight yarn. Uh, so it feels like I'm going nowhere. Just for the sheer amount of stitches but yeah it's going really well I'm looking forward to finishing this one so I'm coming up to the last stripe on this stripe section it go into lace and then I think it goes into just a solid colour after that so I think I am maybe like a third of the way through but someone I'm sure someone else will know I haven't actually really um it's one thing looking at the photographs and seeing that it's a really beautiful project and it's another actually knitting it and being like how far am I through? I don't know. Um, so that is basically the only project I'm working on at the moment. I've got quite a few that I've got planned. Kind of focusing all of my energy on knitting this one and trying to get through it or at least a large portion of it all the way through uh, before I start another project because otherwise I lose focus and then I switch between all the projects and I feel like none get any sort of anywhere done. So that's the projects I'm working on at the moment. So acquisitions. Uh, I have kind of had a little bit of a crappy month I guess. I mean it's not been terrible but it's not been great. I've been feeling really like meh about stuff just uh like my day job i've been getting really tired i have to get up at 2 a.m every morning to go to work um and then i come home and i could just feel a bit like <sighs> i tend to go on spending sprees when i'm feeling kind of rubbish um just to try and up it a little bit um so this month I've kind of bought a fair amount of yarn, not a horrendous amount, but enough, enough to keep me going. Uh, so some of the first ones I've got is actually a project I've got planned to hopefully finish for Christmas as a present for my partner Ant. Uh, I've been wanting to knit something for him for a while, but he is so picky at what uh, he like wears and things so there's only so much that I can kind of knit for him I haven't actually knitted anything for him before uh, but he's so picky that I've kind of been terrified that if I knitted him something he wouldn't wear it but I was trawling Ravelry a couple of weeks ago 
and I managed to find the Juiced, I want to say, uh, Juiced number two jumper by Annex Strick. Again, names, not my uh, forte. Basically, the jumper looks absolutely perfect for him. It is so slouchy and chill, and if I make it slightly bigger, he wears giant clothes that are about three three or four sizes too big for him uh, so if I make this jumper even bigger I think he he should wear it hopefully it also all of his clothes are like greys and blacks and like khaki greens uh, so I managed to find this yarn and I thought it was pretty much perfect for him and then I found the pattern and I was like yes let's give this a go so hopefully for Christmas I can get it finished um, so the yarn I bought for him is King Cold's Forest, which is a recycled Aran, uh, just in a grey colour, uh, but I thought this was pretty much perfect for him. It is, I think it's, I believe it's 100% recycled as well. It is actually a lot softer than I was expecting for a recycled yarn, uh, so hopefully it should be nice. I've got, I've really got to cast this on soon because it's going to take me a while. So the next one is actually for me that I treated myself with and it is from Pigment and Ply. And I went onto the website and I treated myself to... <laughs> we'll get. And I treated myself to these ones because I kind of planned on doing the size inclusivity words they do not work size inclusivity uh knit along that through the wardrobe is doing via uh, instagram and i had planned on doing the my little secret crop by jesse may uh it's such a pretty crop but i thought it would be perfect to do in some dk weight uh yarn and do like a fade throughout the scrop crop top um, and I saw this on Pigment and Supplies website and I thought it was beautiful and perfect especially now that it's getting into autumn time and I picked up these mini skeins. How autumn do they scream? Like beautiful reds and greens and some browns. Oh just so pretty. Uh, so I'm actually really looking forward to casting this one on for myself. Uh, I actually ordered <clears throat> the mini skein set comes with five mini skeins uh, but when I ordered it it was such a long wait between the ordering and the dispatch date um, and I just wanted to make sure I like messaged her to make sure that my order hadn't gotten lost or anything because uh, that is always a weird paranoia thing for me when stuff takes ages to arrive and actually it's just been that she'd been overrun with so many orders throughout the Yorkshire Yarn Festival and things um, that she was running a little bit behind and I did not mind waiting whatsoever I understood completely obviously running my own business and things as well uh, but she was so lovely she sent me an extra mini scheme so I've got six so I've got more than enough now I think I hope I haven't really taken much notice of what yardage and size and stuff that I actually need but I'm hoping I have more than enough now to get on with the my little secret crop I think these will just make a beautiful beautiful crop I think uh, so that's a treat for myself with that one um, and another treat for myself because I noticed that she had a little bit of a promotion going on her Etsy shop is uh, Biff Sugar Yarns. Uh, I went a bit overboard with this one. Uh, so I treated myself to start with with a beautiful BFL and this is in the colourway Teasel I want to say um, and there's pinks and greys and yellows and I bought this one to give it a go for some socks as well. These socks will hopefully be for me instead of having to gift them on because I've not knitted them big enough for me and then I bought these three fingering weight ones as well uh, those two I was going to find a project to do together maybe like a loose knit jumper or 
some sort of crop top and mix it in with maybe some of my own yarn as well or maybe like a giant shawl i don't know i don't have a plan for these i thought they were really pretty so these are sort of purple gray tones so pretty and then this one i thought it would go perfectly with my colorway which is uh be my valentine so be my valentine is one of mine that i sell in my shop woolen witch and then this one is Courage and Kindness by Biff Sugar Yarns and together I thought they would work kind of perfectly for a project. Um, so again no idea on what to do. I'm sure I can find something that I have saved on my Ravelry page that would be appropriate for them but no major plans for it but they're so pretty. And then I feel like I'm saying and then a lot. I, I need like another segue word or sentence. So the other week Ant and I went to the Bishop's Palace Gardens in Wells. Wells, not Wales. Just putting that there. Uh, and there is a tiny but jam-packed yarn shop in Wells down a tiny little side street that uh, we had literally had to get Google Maps to show us where it was. Uh, so, of course, whilst we were there, we also went to the yarn shop and, of course, I bought yarn. Uh, so I got some Debbie Bliss Angel Mohair. Um, don't have a plan for it. I thought it was a pretty colour. So it's like this bluey, greeny colour, which I thought if I paired that with... So I thought if I paired it with my smudge colourway and held them together, maybe for some socks or maybe a jumper at some point. So I got myself a couple of balls of these, um, but I, th I thought they would just pair up really well. And now that I see it on camera, even better. Whilst I was there, picked up a few knitting needle point protectors because I realised that when I shove my knitting and my project bags into my handbag the needle jams out the side and then gets caught so I picked up some very cheap very cheap uh, point protectors large ones and big ones just so that I've got some extra ones of those really so that's actually all of the yarn I bought it, it seems like a lot for my bag balance but looking at it it's not a lot. I feel like I should buy more now. Life update, I guess. Uh, so last time on the podcast, I was doing a shop update. Uh, so I'd done the shop update at the start of September. It is now the, at filming, it is now the 29th. So it was quite a while ago. It went really well. I just want to thank you all. If you, even if you just checked out the live video or if you visited the shop or made an order, even better, thank you so much. Uh, I was so astounded by all of the love I received on the last video for some of the yarns and stuff I showed you and the stitch markers. Uh, I was just so blown back. I just want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart, seriously. This community, this knitting community has made me feel straight, like an actual part of it straight away. And I, for someone that always struggles in social situations or just feeling like I'm on the outside of things, coming to the knitting community has just been amazing. So I want to thank you so much for that. Other life update stuff. So at the moment, um, I am sorting out a lot for the Bristol pop-up shop website. Uh, every year, uh, me and a group of friends all get together and we run a pop-up shop in the centre of Bristol in the galleries. Uh, we're doing it again this year, but alongside of that, we're also running an online shop. Uh, so anyone that isn't able to visit the in store can actually still do some of their Christmas shopping and support local 
independent businesses online uh, by shopping with us. Uh, I have taken on, I don't, I don't know why, uh, I have taken on sorting out uh, all the back end stuff for the website. Uh, we are hoping to open up the online shop towards the end of October, uh, definitely at the start of November. So I'll leave a link below and you can have a quick look and check out the backgrounds for everyone that is involved in opening up the shop and doing all the organising and things. I believe there's nine of us. There's a lot of us when we get into a room. Uh, we all get together and we all organise it so every individual person is part of another team so I have been doing the website, someone else is taking charge of doing all the admin for the pop-up shop, someone else is doing the marketing and all the adverts and things like that. So we tried to share it out evenly amongst us. Uh, this will be our third year. Last, the last two years have been absolutely amazing, but this year is our first year doing the online shop. So we're really hoping that that goes well as well because we are hoping to extend it so it's not just Christmas, but a year round thing. So yeah, at the moment I am organizing the online pop-up shop but I am also trying to organize myself for Christmas uh, so trying to get my yarns and things all dyed up and ready for Christmas to go into the pop-up shop but also to go on my website. I've also been trying to organize myself and get the advent calendars all packed and ready to get shipped out. Uh, I am waiting on the final few like extras to go in for the Christmas Day scheme. Everything else is pretty much done. It just needs to be packed into the little bags and put into the advent boxes. Hopefully they will be out soon. I'm really excited to see what people's reactions are for it because it's my first year doing advent calendars. Uh, so every day you get 20 grams of fingering weight yarn that I've hand dyed. Uh, so there's 24 different colourways plus an extra special Christmas Day one uh, that you had the option of doing. Uh, I only made 10 this year and I sold out. I was so, oh, just so excited for it. I just, it was just so good. Uh, I wasn't expecting to sell any of them. I didn't want to make too many. So I only made 10 because I didn't want to be stuck with like eight advent calendars for the next year um, and not sell them and they all of them sold out. I feel like I should have made extra but it's too late now because all the yarns already died up. I'm so pleased. I'm so pleased that people like my, my stuff that I'm making. Uh, before this I was doing like illustrated stuff so I was doing like badges and stickers and like notepads and stationery and stuff. And like whilst it sold it was like hard work, like real hard work and I did not make the money back for the hours that I was putting into. This yarn stuff, I I enjoy it a lot more than I did for the drawing stuff. But it's also nice knowing that other people also like it as well and are willing to support me in this and I just want to, again I'm getting emotional. Thank you. I thought it might be kind of nice to add in what books I'm reading and or listening to uh, as well whilst I'm knitting. I thought that might be kind of cool. Uh, so at the moment I have just finished the current books that are out for the Harbinger series which is by Jennifer L. Armand Trout. I want to say stout, it's not, it's trout. Uh, they are really good. They're about some basically gargoyles. It's gargoyles and like half angels. I think if you're a fan of Sarah J Mass, I think you definitely like her writing style as well. It's really nice and simple but it really takes you on in with the story and the characters and the emotions as well. Quite a bit of like unrequited love as well which is something I really enjoy reading. I, I don't I don't know, it just, it just gives me the feels. Not that I really need to be pushed into feeling an emotion because I am overly emotional all the time, but the, the, the writing just brings me in with it. I've also started her other series which is called Covenant. 
Uh, I'm really enjoying that as well. That is to do with like the Greek gods and demigods um, living amongst humans, basically. It, I am, I'm actually really enjoying it. Again, there's sort of unrequited love. Uh, if there's not an interesting sort of romance love story in with loads of action and fantasy stuff, I won't generally rave about it. Something to do, something about unrequited love. It's just, just what, just what I'm into. Gotta have them feels. I blame Trudy Canavan for that. Her Black Magician series was like one of the first books that I really got into, and ever since then I got, I gotta have some like romance. Gotta have, gotta have them. I've pretty much just been on a Jennifer L. Almentrout uh, binge lately. Uh, I had loads of, I don't have loads, I had a few uh, Audible credits to use up and she kept getting uh, recommended to me. I bought her from Blood in Ash book series a while ago. I haven't sat down and read it but I thought I'd give her other series a go as well so I had some credits so I used them for those books. I will actually have to now sit down and read from Blood and Ash because I have enjoyed her other book series so much and her, her writing. I just, oh yeah. If you're a fan of Sarah J Mass, definitely give it a go. It's, they're so, they've got this same kind of feel to it and it just sort of draws, drew, drew me in. I'm not sure what else I need to talk about today. I'm, I, I, I made notes this time and everything and I still feel like I'm forgetting stuff but I do this every time I leave the house as well. I always feel like I'm forgetting something and then I run through my list and I'm not forgetting something but I still have that gut feeling. I'm, I'm gonna have this for the next hour on whether I've forgotten to tell you guys anything in the podcast. I'm hoping to start doing these podcasts monthly at the very least. Uh, I feel like any more than that and I won't have much to tell you guys. Uh, if I feel like I've got enough to start doing it fortnightly then I will but at the moment it, I think monthly is probably the best way to go for me. If any of you want to support me take a look at my web shop. Uh, it is woolenwitch.co.uk which spelt with a Y because why not? And you can also follow me on Instagram. Uh, I'm woolenwitch on there as well. And don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye guys!